Well, this Guyana struggle for independence that um, is rooted in a socialist discourse. So when the Constitution is suspended, um, the Guyana case becomes an international cause celeb. And Alan Bush, who has the repetition of being um, a Marxist composer, composes this opera called The Sugar Reapers, um, which premieres in Leipzig Opera House uh, in East Germany in December 1966. And what is interesting is that he draws upon quite quite, you know, uh, to compose some of the music for that opera. So let me try to play a little piece of... Uh, Set up not only the first 
He's going to set up the first pressing plant in Guyana. The first recording studio is Radio Demerara. The second one is Al Seals. But the first pressing studio is Terry Nelson. And he comes back on, the, on this wave of identity, self-awareness, uh, you know, and begins to experiment with what he calls the Afro-Indie beat. And here he is working with Enchanter. And Enchanter is, is part of that group that lines in the most creative block that uh, used to be in Georgetown, um, Wellington Street, Rock Street, Regent Street, that, that block there by Freedom House around it. There be all the Cedar and Lalfa, um, you know, Cedar Rock, you know, that whole community is like, this is where the musicians hang out. You know, this is where the, the top is. When you want to uh, pick up a musician, you, you, that's the neighborhood. In that neighborhood is Lord Enchanter. And Enchanter um, delivers this one. Somebody just knock a drum there, you know, you hear that dollar clash there. But what Enchant what, what Enchant is saying, Enchant in that song comments on other efforts at creating a national song. He said, Me don't want no low people, you don't want no mash people. Afro indie beat is the beat for all of you. So what this song is, is not only um, bringing to the fore a range of musical instruments in a composition. He's also leaving us a hint of, um, you know, what the other musical beats are. There's a big discourse in Guyana. This is about 1972, right? Um, what he's doing, he's leaving us with, uh, with, 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 with a hint of what is going on. Guyana is going through this question, if Trinidad got Kaiso and Jamaica got Blue Beat and Barbados got Scooch, where is Guyana on? That's a big discourse um, taking place in the society. And it's being pushed by the politics of the time. You know, the president and the prime minister at that time, um, Barnum uh, appears at a steel band competition. The issues that he edict as of this day, all government corporations or any organization in which we have more than 51% will sponsor a steel band. And you have this blossoming of steel band. This is your Chronicle Atlantic, you know. This is your Dentoko, you know. This is, you know, that kind of blossoming. It's out of this period this uh, thing is taking place. Also in this period in the 70s is the Guyana National Service, right? Uh, I, I plead guilty. You know, I was a member of that. I see some national service friends over here. But what is interesting is that there is this deliberate effort to create music that is binding, that is different. And here is a piece composed by the first um, cadets, um, the first um, pioneers at Kimbia. But the interesting thing.
I'm certain that you would have noticed that when I passed through the 1950s, I didn't say anything about Bridget Ghana Music Festival. Well, you know, uh, you know, that was a very important moment, and its lineage goes right back to the sugar industry. Um, the story behind the music festival, the school music festival, goes back to Linda Dolphin's mother when they lived over West Demerara. And once a year, um, the sugar community um, had um, a, a festival for the schools in that Blankenburg um, neighborhood. Um, when Linda came back from, uh, from um, the Royal College of Music, uh, that was one of her first um, ventures in the school's music. Uh, festival and the interface with the BG Militia Band and the El Cachero's grandfather, Major Henwood, and it, it, you know, it's a, it, you know, that is a, that's a whole stream that the, this is door uh, that they are with carrying that flag um, today. Um, also taking place during this thing, uh, during this 70s, is the popular music scene. There's a band called CFN. Does anybody remember that band? Can't yeah, find a name, and I think that was I, I think what, that was indicative of what was going on in the popular music scene. You can't find a name, can't find a beat, but you had the Jamaican invasion taking place uh, in Guyana at one time in 1974 or 75. Eight of the top ten tunes on the hit parade was Ken Lazarus. Right, hello, Carol, and you got fever and fresh coal and all kinds of stuff like that. Right. Then another element within the, the, the dynamic, in addition to all these efforts, Lopi, Afro Indy Boom, Kalimari, Roots and Chutney, is copycatism. Um, there's more leisure taking place in the society now. There's more demand, there, you know, there's more demand for music. You know, jukebox is a little passe, you right? Jukebox had replaced the big bands, but now the jukebox a little past it, you, you want a light band, you know. And um, it is said that some of these bands had mastered the art of copying, that if they're copying a record, I got a scratch. And if I play, I don't need a stick, tick, tick. But anyway, that was all part of. Um, that scene in the 70s. You got a lot of investment, there's Harry Fester and all that going on. Well, by 1992, um, I don't know what we have. I've got problems with this particular one, but this is Lady Guymine offering a summary of the the Republican era, the decade of progress, the 10 years of the Republic. And, you know, it, it, it's a song of praise. It is a song of adulation. It is a song of Odo. It is one of the multiple Odo songs. If you go into the record, you've got multiple Odo songs in Barnum Garden. Uh, Henry Nelson, you know, I sing to the old coffee, old martyr, old Odo. You know, you've got a, a range of Odo songs. Um, that they were coming up in this period of time. And it is indicative of the strong personality leadership that you've seen from the governors. Because our leaders in, in, in Diana have all built themselves off of the model of the governor. The only difference is that they don't wear the, 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 the clothes, you know, at, at least during the 20th century. I can't speak to the 21st century. So please, please, I beg pardon, I can't speak about the 21st century. 